So you want something different. I hear you. I got gotcha. you. We've got some stuff different here. We're going to be going over five men's designer fragrances that, uh, in my opinion, are, are heavily underrated, and I think you should be checking these out. And the reason why these are underrated is because people just don't really know about them necessarily. They don't really talk about them all that often. They don't pay much attention to them. Uh, we have one of these here, which is from a, a big designer brand. But a, a lot of these here are just kind of more low-key. We have a fragrance line that a lot of people dislike. And we have a, a couple fragrances that you've probably never heard of before. These are all going to be affordable except for one. Uh, the one from the uh, popular designer brand is going to fetch you a bit more money. But everything else here you can typically get for around, I don't know, $50 and under. I will link these down below to discounters so you can pick them up at a price below retail if you would like to. Uh, I recommend you check these out. It's a great video here because we have a little bit of everything for everybody. We have something that is super uplifting and bright and fresh all the way to some things that are heavier and richer. So we've got all of the seasons covered, all of the different uh, categories covered in terms of date night, casual, formal, that sort of thing. And we have just a nice range uh, of different types of fragrances depending on your taste. Now let's go ahead and start off with Ceruti 1881 Signature. This one here is very, very nice and definitely deserves to be talked about more. We'll take one more look at the bottle. Forgot to show the back side of it. it. has this painted look to it on the back with their logo, I suppose. And then the front is glass you can see through. Leather, pepper, amber, and cardamom. I'm gonna give this one a spray. This is one of uh, one of the best budget leather fragrances that I think I've discovered, seriously. There's a lot of great leather fragrances out there for sure, don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying that this is the best leather fragrance, but I'm saying it is the best budget leather fragrance. Typically, in the lower price point, leather, if, if it is listed, you may not even pick up on it that much. It just might be kind of an imaginary note or it's so subtle that you can't even call it a leather fragrance. But this one really does bring that note to the forefront, to the center. It's kind of the center of attention. It's all about the leather. You get the pepper, giving it a bit of a spicy kick. The leather itself also has this kind of dry, uh, somewhat earthy spiciness to it. You know, it's a little bit more of a challenging leather. It's not a leather like, for example, uh, Ombre Leather by Tom Ford, where that one's very mass pleasing. But this one yet also isn't quite to the point of Tuscan Leather or something along those lines. So it's kind of in the middle. It's leather, spices, and a bit of sweetness from the amber. Very well done. Quality is great. Performance is great. Uh, smell, of course, is amazing. And even the presentation. I mean, I, I don't really have any anything uh, against this presentation here. Press fit cap, which it is firm. Doesn't really bother me too much. It has a cool look to it on the back here, so you can choose which side you want to display on your shelf. Which one would you choose? How would you have it sitting? Let me know. Have this side facing the public or this side? For me, I usually have it actually sitting on the floor and I have it sitting with the glass side up so when I spray stuff, it doesn't get on the back and make it look all ugly. Yes, I've said it before, I have fragrances on the floor. We've got a problem. So let's go right here next. Yope Ohm Absolute. So this one is pretty cool. It's the upgraded presentation, 120 milliliters with a snap-on cap. The bottle's a little bit wider. Uh, and that sort of thing. I think I have another one over here I can show you. This one is, uh, oh, it's 125 mils, and this one is 120. So they, they changed it up a little bit. This is Yop Ohm uh, Eau de Parfum. You can see the bottles, uh, I don't know, it's less smushed in a way. There's just differences between the two. This one's wider, this one's more narrow. It's not really much taller either, maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Um, and these do come equipped with press fit caps. Not my favorite. The Opom Absolute, big upgrade here. This one, $45. Incense, tonka bean, pepper, and ylang ylang are a few of the notes. It's kind of the majority of the notes actually that they give you. And it's a pretty, pretty good note breakdown. And by that, I mean that's kind of what you pick up on. Fantastic stuff. The incense comes through right away, giving it a smokiness. There's a little bit of a dustiness, like a labdanum, uh, benzoin type of feel, you know, powderiness, and that's kind of coming from the tonka bean as well, but almost does have a little bit of a labdanum type of smell. Uh, really, really nice, smoky, uh, woody, kind of a little bit earthy, but not all that much. 
very nice for you know fall and early winter you could wear it throughout the entirety of winter uh, but for me i typically go into the heavier boozy stuff and, and sweeter stuff this one is almost more of a transitional season fragrance or fall because it has kind of that smoky freshness in a way and I know that sounds weird, smoky, but also fresh, but it has that balance. And that would be coming from the Ylang Ylang kind of popping off and giving it a little bit of a kind of a, a balance there. Uh, really, really nice stuff from opening to dry down, from atomization uh, to the bottle. Again, I already touched on that. There is color matched uh, details. So the Yope, Ohm, and Yellow. A little yellow dot on the atomizer right there. All in all, a great package. Uh, one that I do encourage you to check out. With Yope, you know, they have some serious hit or misses. Like either you like it or you hate it almost. This is one where I like it a lot. I like Yope Ohm Wild, another really good one, Yope Ohm Ice. Just because you don't like the original and you don't like the Eau de Parfum because they're too syrupy sweet, I encourage you to check out the rest of the line because they have some seriously, like really top-notch fragrances in there. They're kind of uh, in and out of stock a lot. Once they go out of stock, they're usually gone for a while. They're just kind of harder to get here in the U.S. on discounters, it seems. So if you want one of these, I would jump on it. Okay, let's go ahead and touch on that more expensive designer fragrance here from Dolce & Gabbana. This one is Velvet Incenso. So I've talked about this one briefly in passing here and there, but I'll tell you what, this is out of this world. I wish I would have bought the big bottle. Um, I don't know, I think it's five ounce or something. This is a 50 milliliter. And realistically, you guys know this, you're probably rolling your eyes. Yes, this is probably enough for me, given that I have other stuff as well. But, you know, for me, when I like a fragrance this much, I want as much of it as I can. That's why I have countless backup bottles of some of my favorite fragrances, even though it's completely unnecessary, even though it, it could be a waste of money unless it gets discontinued and then now I have some for myself forever. But you know, with this, it just is, it's fantastic. Incense, benzoin, black pepper, and amber. So that sounds a little bit similar to Yopom Absolute, but this one is much more velvety. It's more silky, smooth, creamy, and rich and ambery. Like there is a serious amount of sweetness behind this one. I gotta do it. I gotta spray it as well. Man, I shouldn't even be wasting it, but I mean, wow, just amazing. So, so rich, so decadent. So again, I'm gonna say it again, velvety. Uh, it's kind of the, the you know theme of the line, the velvet line or whatever. Velvet exotic leather is another one that's very good, but that one's a little bit sold out right now, I believe. So the point is, this is amazing. This is the type of thing that you will smell and be like, oh, that's why I'm passionate about this hobby. I've talked about this before, but it's easy to get caught up in the things that are similar to each other and you kind of start to lose touch of why you're doing this. For me, anyway, this is the one that kind of ties it all back together. I'm like, yeah, this is why I'm into this because the richness, the uh, body, the depth, the smokiness, the sweetness of this one smells great. It's really good in the winter time but what's funny is it reminds me of like Halloween and fall for some reason, even though it, you know, again, it's more appropriate probably for the cooler weather because it's so rich and syrupy. It reminds me of Halloween. I don't know. There's something about it. I think the type of incense in here just kind of reminds me of some spooky stuff. So there you have it. Uh, okay. This one is a wild card. I would say most of you probably haven't heard of this, whether it be the brand or the fragrance itself or both. I know for me, I don't know how I found this, but I had never heard of it. And so I'm excited to present it to you and I hope you're sticking around. We got one left. I'm putting this one kind of towards the end of the video here. So my true OGs will see this. This is M zero degrees Celsius. Okay. With the frosted glass bottle and a little cut out there by Masaki Matsushima. Masaki Matsushima. You know, something like that, right? Tequila, citruses, bellflower, apple, musk, and teakwood is the entire note breakdown. Okay, say that a couple times fast. Tequila, right? That uh, it, I would be lying if I said that that wasn't the reason why I bought this. And look at that atomizer, fantastic. It's another one where I'm just like, this is it. You know, this one is not going to be for everyone because it's so bright and citrusy and fresh. You know, I understand that 
you know, you could even have a give someone a niche fragrance that is, you know, top notch citrus, and they would still be like, yeah, it smells great, but it's just not for me. Citrus and freshies is kind of that one thing where universally, I think a lot of people think that they smell nice, but fewer people kind of get blown away by them and have those reactions. I think it's more common, especially, you know, talking about inside the collectors and stuff, uh, the fragrance community, it's more common to get blown away, of, you know, from stuff like this, Dolce & Gabbana, uh, Velvet, and, um, you know, stuff like that. This, for me, though, is one that it does it for me on the fresh side. Um, and these days, it's harder for that to happen because I am so invested in the richer, heavier, boozy, sweeter stuff, the tobaccos, that sort of thing. But um, I'm going to do one more spray, do a little half spray there. But this one does it for me. Nice, bright, kind of a sparkling tequila opening. You get apple, citrus. Um, you get the musk in here also. It sounds basic and it sounds boring, but there's this texture and this magic and this brightness about this one that I have not found in any other fragrance in this category. It's amazing and it's so, so just, you know, under the radar. Who would think of something like this? And again, you know, I'm gonna show you one more time. The bottle is super cool. I'm a, you know, I love frosted glass. If anything was frosted glass, I would Im immediately be like, oh, that looks amazing. But it really does. The coloration, even the weird shape of the bottle, the uh, silver plating on the front. It's an eau de toilette. This is an 80 milliliter bottle. Uh, but I got to say, if you can get your hands on this one, highly recommend it if you like, you know, summer fragrances. And this last one is one that has been talked about, but not nearly to the extent as most other designer fragrances out there, okay? This one is Luomo by Gianfranco Fair. So here we go, affordable as well, I don't know, $30, $40, something like that in that range online. This one has violet, pepper, sandalwood, apple, and bergamot. There's a lot more going on. There's a, a good mess of notes in the top, mid, and base, but those are really the ones that I kind of focus on here. So what's interesting about this one, I'll go ahead and give this one a spray as well. It's uh, wet right now because earlier I went to put the cap on and you gotta be careful. Some bottles, you know, there's ridges in there. I went to put the cap on it, it kind of hung up and it sprayed inside the cap and it's still wet. But another one with a great atomizer, unexpected. And it, hey, it smells great. So here's what this one reminds me of. It's kind of like a mess between these two right here. And I say mess, I mean that in a good way. A mix, I guess I should say. First Instinct Extreme and First Instinct Eau de Toilette. It kind of is. And it's great news because First Instinct Extreme for whatever reason is just gone. Sold out, discontinued, they don't make it anymore, I don't know. I so wish I would've gotten backup bottles. I'm kicking myself because you can't really find it. And I love it. Uh, so this uh, Luomo here has kind of the sweetness of First Instinct Extreme, that richness, um, but then it has the peppery, kind of fruity melon uh, top note of the original First Instinct. Kind of a, a hybrid between the two. And in a lot of ways, it almost is closer to the extreme. So for me, that's why I like this one a lot, because you can get it. It's not one-to-one, -one, it's not an exact replica, but it's close. It gives you a similar feeling. It's this fun, kind of playful, you know, fruity fragrance, but there's more depth in here going on. You know, more of a sandalwood, kind of creaminess almost. So, you know, differences for sure. And uh, still playful, but not as playful as First Instinct. So depending on where you're at and what you're after, maybe you would like this one better because it isn't as playful. Point is, I think it's great. Very nice stuff. People don't really talk about it. People probably don't really think about it. But if you like First Instinct and you want something a bit more mature, you want something a little bit, little bit like First Instinct Extreme, but you can't find it, go here. Alrighty, yeah, that's gonna do it for me. That is five designer fragrances that are criminally underrated, and I think you should be checking these out ASAP. Links to these down below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.